Boyakasha, check out my car. Nay, no, nay, no. Coppers, as you've never seen them before. <laughs> whoop, whoop, bitter sound of the police. I pay my taxes that pay all these wages. With the recession biting. Nine coppers for one lad. Well, you You're ridiculous. Reeling from unprecedented cuts to their budget. Need officers now under attack from a group of about 40. The police are under pressure. Oh, you fucker. Yeah, we've just been bricked. Calm down, pal. With crime rates rising. Get off! Get off! Get off! The officers speak out. To let us know what they really think about us. There are a few people which, at the back end of 50,000 volts, would probably make me smile, but I wouldn't do it to everybody, obviously. Taser, taser, taser! From the friendly local bobbies who look after our neighbourhoods to the detectives who deal with the most serious incidents. <laughs> and the armed response unit who are at the front line of fighting crime. Do you understand what you've been arrested for? What have you been arrested for then? You I can't. Can't. Okay. Because they would blow his brains out. Armed and ready to face any emergency. Do you shoot to kill? Yeah. Armed response officers from Nottinghamshire Police are called to intercept a car. They believe it contains a gun. Yeah, affirmative, sir. I've got the helicopter lifted. A witness claims to have been threatened, and the car is registered to a man with an extensive criminal record. Armed police, stay there. Put your hands up in the air. Walk away from the vehicle. Do as I say, you'll come to no harm. Stay there, don't move. Stay in the vehicle. Stay in the vehicle. I enjoy the arm stock work because you kind of never know what the driver of the vehicle is going to do. So it keeps you alert and keeps you thinking on your feet. So if they do something which kind of you're not expecting, you've got to be in a position to deal with that to still carry out the tactic safely. Walk down towards this officer behind me. Keep your hands where I can see them. I do get this on board. Happy here, Jim. Yeah, over to you. What's your name, please? Obviously, you know, because I just pulled my car off. Well, no, I don't, because I've never met you, do I? You could be anybody, I've never met you. What's your no, name, I'm please? I'm not talking to you. Search my car and let me go. Right. At the moment, you can't go anywhere until we've got your details. So the sooner you give me your name, the sooner we can get the no, ball this rolling. No, it's a joke. No. Right, well, in which. Well, search until, my car and let me until go. Until you give me your name, we can't do anything. <laughs> no, I'm not. Okay, so I need, I need to you to give you. I need your details. What's your name, please? The sooner you comply Search with us, though. Search my and let me go. You're taking away their liberty. You're assaulting them. You know, pointing a weapon at somebody. It's classed as an assault. So it is a big deal. It can be quite frustrating if, if it's somebody who you, based on intelligence or based on information or based on previous dealings, that you think that person probably has had a gun in that car or probably has had a weapon in that car and then you don't find something. It, it's obviously quite frustrating that you've not managed to recover that weapon and take it off the streets. We've searched your car and uh, we can't find anything in it. Are we, go, are we allowed back in the car then? Yeah, that's what I'm going to say to you. You're free okay. to go. We've got all your details. We'll make right. a record of the fact of uh, you've been stopped and detained. Yeah. OK. Jump Thank out you. and I'll take the off you. I think I'm all right. I wouldn't say I'm number one. That'd be a bit too modest, maybe. It's a cream off the top, as it were, that do the firearms policing. It's only a minority amongst the whole police force. So when you sort of get there, you do feel good about it, because, you know, you, you jump through hoops and go through months of training to get there. <laughs> Shooting guns is great. You know, it's, it does give you that sort of buzz, and there is, there is an adrenaline element around it. And I was that bog standard Bobby on response. And you've got the firearms unit flying off and doing, you know, the Gucci end of the job. Uh, yeah, I was jealous of them. Carbine, high velocity, 
it's our primary weapon. I can imagine, you know, if, if you're at the baddie, uh, you know, staring down the barrel, as it were, it's not going to be something you're going to want to be, you know, arguing with. People are shocked to the core when they see cops wandering around with things like this on the street, but that's the way of the world, that's the things that we use, and we have to obviously meet force with force with a little bit more sometimes. Walther self loading pistol, 9mm rounds. It is the one that's featured in the latest Bond film, so there you go. Does that mean you've got a license to kill? <laughs> Technically, yes. Or thrill, maybe. <laughs> Standard police taser, 50,000 volts. You can use it in a drive stun mode, which is basically where you will drive the weapon into a subject. Or you've got up to a 21 feet range. But if you're shooting someone from 21 feet away with a taser, then you're going to have to be a good shot. It's predominantly a close range weapon. What's your favourite cop movie? Heat. There's a good firefight in there. Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when we come for you, bad boy? I'm not doing that. You've probably watched the telly and seen how armed cops are on the telly. That's, you know, it's the television, isn't it? It's not normal day-to-day -day police work. Bad boys, bad boys, <laughs> what you gonna do when they come for you? The West Side style. They're driving their Ferraris and shooting at people and like wearing our diesel Volvos and then if they like decide to smash up about 10 cars on an American highway and if we like clip a wing mirror on our cars and we've got like about reams of paperwork to sort out but obviously not in the, in the, in the world of bad boys too. It's make believe isn't it? I've been duped. Most people have been duped. Go on sausage fingers. After 300 yards, turn right. After 300 yards, shut up! Nottingham's armed police don't just attend high-profile sieges and bank robberies. They also have to patrol the city like normal cops. On a routine patrol, officers spot a stolen car. Sturkey is out like a whippet. He's, he's straight out of the car. Before I know it, Sturk is running up to this lad, draws his taser as well. The only way he could come to get away was through me. So I drew the taser, which made him comply straight away. Turn around. Stay where you are, stay where you are, stay where you are. Stay where you are, stay where you are, you come, you come. Put those down. So let's get this straight. Sturkey, the hero of the piece. Yeah. With his taser. What did you do? Yeah, I kind of arrested the pregnant female that was getting out of the passenger side. So, try and leave, jump in slowly. Right, I'll get you some space. Did he claim to be a footballer or something like that? So obviously she thought he was kind of like a bit of a catch or a potential date target. Going out on the first date and ended up being arrested in a stolen car. Classy, yeah. Dickhead! You're putting somebody's car on them. No, no. Listen, get your hands. To your gun. Thirteen previous. Possession with intent to supply, control of drug class B. Um, robbery. Possession with intent to supply, class B. Ooh. Cultivating cannabis. Ooh. Grievous bodily harm with intent. Uh, burglary and theft in 2008. ABH. Robbery, robbery, shoplifting, burglary and theft. A general, all round, good egg. Fair play to Sturkey, credit where credit's due, you know, as much as I hate to admit it. He spotted the car, he got the driver, and I ended up with the five foot five pregnant female that was just moaning and crying a fair bit, but was clearly probably not a burglar. Ho hum, say la vie. PC Sturk alighted the vehicle like a surprised gazelle. I wasn't surprised. Because a gazelle gets surprised by a kind of like a, a hunting animal. I was more the hunting animal going after the surprised gazelle. <laughs> Bless him. I love him to pieces, but he can be a bit of an idiot. I'm just going to go for PC Sturk alighted the police vehicle and detained him. Full stop. That's more like it, isn't it? Heroically detained him? No. You're wrong again. Members of Nottingham's Armed Response Unit gather for a briefing. A man with access to firearms is alleged to be stalking and threatening to kill his ex-girlfriend. 
as you may have in the future. They split up about three months ago uh, because of his controlling behaviour. He is a uh, licensed shotgun holder. Uh, he holds uh, the relevant certificates for uh, a total of nine, was it ten, ten. weapons? Ten weapons. Uh, about nine shotguns and a, a rifle. We're dealing with somebody that's potentially armed and could, you know, arguably take somebody's life. So we need to have everything in place for us to deal with that and deal with it successfully. Green Toyota. We're looking to go for a stop shortly. Yes, yes. Put the stop on. I know you're right. but it's pathetic what this is all about. It's absolutely Okay, well we'll clearly find that and you course won't we? Yeah, yeah, right. Will, yeah. yeah. Right, take a seat. The police visit his grandparents' farm, where the guns are stored. Hello. What's going off then? Not tell you. What's going off? Yeah. I can't tell you, yeah. My yeah. grandson's been at work here all day, yeah. so what's he done? Right, okay. He's been arrested because there's been an allegation made by his former girlfriend. Yeah. Uh, in respects of uh, messages and threats that have been made. It wouldn't do it. Okay. But so we'll say we can only that's act, entirely we can, up to you. No, yes. We can only act on what we're told, can't we? Yes, uh, that uh, you and, can. And, and just by the very nature, there's been uh, you have access to firearms. Yes. That, that's, yes. Our, that's our immediate concern. Yes. So it's just the one cabinet for this dwelling, is it? For this property. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And they're all the weapons that you um, have. I think, yeah, I think that's all of them. Right, I'll take, I'll take these three, though. Uh, no, where's the ammunition? As the guns are removed for safekeeping, the suspect's grandmother reveals why she is happy to have the guns in the house. We're both 70, yeah, and we're down here on our own at night. We've got to have some form of protection, do you know what I mean? Because we've lost the dog. Right. So, you know. I think there was about four of us in the room at the time, and we all looked at one another as if to say, Really? It'd be a very brave person if their house was being burgled, if they knew that they had a shotgun in their gun cabinet to go and get that shotgun and shoot that burglar. Is what they do proportionate to the person that's broken the house? And I think that's that one word that needs to be considered. If somebody breaks in their house with a firearm, is it proportionate to defend yourself with a firearm? A person who'd have to justify that, the same with what we would have to justify within law if we wanted to made that decision to take that shot at somebody. A man has been acting violently towards an ambulance crew. They've requested urgent armed backup. Bond has been stabbing himself in the neck with a knife and they believe he's still got the knife on him. You, yeah, don't worry about it. It's a blue light. Very, very verbal, very aggressive. Sitting in my mates, actually. He's barking, honestly. Right. He's saying he was trying to get the nurse's scissors because I want to stab my throat. And so, he says, like, we've got the call now. And he has phoned right. up to say he's... Stabbing himself. Oh, this is what he's yeah. saying now. Yeah. Gloves on then. Right. Whereabouts is the knife? It's in my pocket. Where's your pocket? Which pocket? I'm not going to tell you. If you've got a oh, knife on you. I feel a bit psycho. Alright. Right, I appreciate so that. I, I don't feel. I'm not well. Yeah, I appreciate that, mate, and we can sort that out in a second, but what we need to do is get that knife no, off I you first. I'm not going to do anything. All right, well, you just told me you got a knife on you. Just do us a favour, just stand up for us, please. That one's here as well, OK? We just may need to make sure you've not got a knife and then we can sort you out. I'm not well. I know, appreciate that. But if you just stand up so we can check you out first and then we can get you seen right. by ambulance. Just lift your cardio up for us a bit. Come on, let's just get, lift your cardio up. And as soon as we can get you, I can't you, see you now. I can't right. see anything. All, all right. right, I'll lift it for you, mate. Just keep your hands up. Yeah, I'm all right. Just keep, I'm just keep, I'm keep your arms up for us. I know, I know. We've just I've never met you before, have we? So. You got no time, have you, mate? All right, mate. No. All right. All right, that's nice right. Shall we take you to the hospital? 
I'm not very well. I know. So shall we take you to the hospital, see if we can get you to speak to somebody? Okay, I go. I don't, I don't mean it. I just, I'm just a bit fucked up in the end. If you, if you are going to go with the ambulance, okay. Yeah. I've got to speak, you've got to take this on board, all right? You can't be like how you were earlier right. with him. I won't. Just promise. Because all that's going to happen is you're going to come down and get yourself I'll arrested. Be all right. I'll be all right. I'll be okay. It struck me straight away as he was somebody with some issues. Um, it didn't strike me as somebody that was particularly aggressive and, envir and, and, and violent to me in that time, but I could also imagine him going up like a pocket rocket in certain circumstances. I just feel a bit mentally ill. Have you had any treatment for anything like that in the past? Uh, yeah, of course I have. Have you? You had any meds for it? I didn't take them. There's a knife there. I feel like shit. So what do we do with him? Lock him up on the chance of, uh, on the what if? I, I don't know the answer. Probably living in that flat on his own is probably not the right answer. Because uh, he, he, he did seem to be descending somewhat, but what is the answer? This is Nottingham East Police Emergency. What's your emergency? Yeah, I've got um, somebody at my door with a gun threatening to shoot me. Is it a male? No, it's a female. My partner has got a pinned on the floor and he's got the gun in his hand. The uh, postcode, please. Fucking you know, hell, it's a job. Fucking miles away. to be a small handgun and apparently we're still meant to be fighting at the scene now. If they put themselves in a situation where I have no choice but to take a shot at them, I will take the shot at them, but it's their choice and their life choices and their actions which have led me to take that shot. Confirm. Yeah, I've got the power Yeah, I've got my watch. No, it's Rob Marwatch. Okay, stand up. It's, it's Rob Marwatch. Okay. Let's put that on the door, mate. It's Rob Marwatch. Um, Just wear that way. Right, I'm not having this, right? Yeah. My yeah. missus okay. is yeah. ten weeks from giving birth. I've got yeah. an 18-month-old yeah. son, right? Yeah. She pointed it through the window at my oh, missus's head. She pointed it and fell And then, the right, yeah. my son as well. I and I come out the door, right, right, I steamed out the door yeah. as she pulled the trigger at my head. He's robbed me. Okay, well, don't shout at me. I've never robbed nobody in my fucking me. life. He's robbed me. Wrong. So, uh, a BB gun. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think if you were to have it pointed at you, you'd, uh, you've got to take it that it would look quite real. Get in the car now. Thank you. Fucking bastard's croat. And she was lovely, wasn't she, Barbara? Got her in the back of a car and, and that was it, and she was really quiet. Not. <laughs> take me to Holloway Hotel then! Because I'm going to kill that bastard, he's robbed my watch. I had to go on double medication. And he said to me, you prostitute. I've never been a prostitute. I did. Hey, at least I'm not a criminal and robbing people. I wasn't a prostitute. I did kissograms. Did a bit of stripping years ago. But I didn't rob nobody. I earned me goddamn money. I thought they were friends. Fucking scrouting, robbing bastards. But I don't know where my door keys are. Bar, bar, barber. Come on, barber, just put your feet out for this. We'll be able to get out. Let's make sure we don't. Come on, barber, let's go this way, look. Come on, this way. God, you let me out tomorrow, and I'll kill him. Do so you think you're dangerous? I think push to the limits, probably, yeah. People shouldn't push me. I'm not a doormat to be walked on. Oh, Wait, you want to push me, family? Well, it's got crabs or something, are they? Can you remember what you said to them in custody? Look, I'd had loads of vodka. No, I can't remember. I can't, honestly. What are you looking for? Do you want to say a bit tense or something? Not really. It 
is quite a regular thing, you know, people will be abusive towards us, but police officers were an easy target. Do you understand what you've been arrested for? Yeah! What have you been arrested for then? You I can't! Okay. Because they would blow his brains out! Okay, you've been arrested for being in possession of a firearm with intent to oh, violence, he won't or fear of violence. He won't. Okay. Oh, he's from my for. watch. That's what you've been arrested for. Okay, I'm going to authorise your detention so we can uh, question you regarding that allegation. Well, allow you to sober up. Allow you to sober up for a bit. Okay. You understand that? What's a bloody deal? Not right. thick brains. I didn't say you were. But I don't believe in robbing people and hurting people. But I'll kill that bastard. Is it funny? Is it tragic? I, I don't know. I've never met her before. I've never met her afterwards. I don't know what she's like when she's not got uh, a considerable amount of alcohol inside me. She might be a very nice lady. Have you ever tried to hurt yourself or kill yourself? Yes! When was the last time you did something? Loads of times! When was the last time you did something? <sighs> About a year ago. About a year ago. What, In the what, Queen's what, Medical. And what did you last try and do? I took loads of tablets. How are you feeling at the moment? Yeah, I can see you're upset. I feel like taking my own in tablets. Now we go hold of them. Are you addicted to alcohol? Yeah. So you're an alcoholic? Well, kind of. Kind of. How do you mean kind of? Well, yeah. Yeah. I don't know what it would be like to not have a drink for even a day. Yeah, I'll get the nurse to come and look at you, all right? You come this way, we're going down to the cell. You want a blanket? No, I want to pee. You want to pee, that's right. I would say there's never an excuse to go out onto the street with a firearm and uh, point it at to members of the public, whether, you know, whether they've done you a wrong or not. There's just no excuse for it. It's not the act of a normal person, is it? So I'm a crazy cow then, like everybody says. A flaming nutter. How do you think you got into a position in your life that has led to this? To you sitting in this room today? Because I was abused as a child by both parents. And I've never ever been able to have a normal life. I've never got it out of me. I've never... It's, I've never been able to get rid of it. I know, I've, I'll be honest, I've seen psychiatrists and all sorts and they don't seem to know what to do with me apart from giving me tablets, but it's no good, is it? If you're drinking. It's horrendous, isn't it? I'm horrified because I didn't know I was capable of that. Do you ever feel sorry for the people that you're arresting? Uh, probably not, I wouldn't have thought. I've never really, uh, I've never really thought about that myself, but I wouldn't, if I just think about it quickly now, I wouldn't say I do feel sorry for people. If people put themselves in that position, then unfortunately they're going to be arrested. You could have been shot that day. But then that's life. If I was meant to be shot, then I'm, I'm meant to be shot. The damage, it's going to put you on the floor and it's potentially obviously going to kill you. Ultimately, you may be asked to, uh, to squeeze that trigger uh, whichever weapon system you're going to be using, and ultimately you may be asked to to take somebody's life. Nottingham's armed police attend an average of 250 incidents a year, where a specialist firearms presence is specifically required. It's an armed robbery a couple of days ago, and the uh, the victim is reported that he's seen the offenders. And there's now somebody following some of the offenders yeah, in the car. They're, they're following this vehicle with the offenders in. We're just trying to clarify that now. So we're going to travel to the general area and hopefully get an update. Where we're going, what we're doing. There's going to be an element of fear in there. 
but it's, you know, the element of the adrenaline is, is, you know, going through your body at the time. And the adrenaline, you could say, leads to excitement. It is a, it's a, it's a, it's a fine line, isn't it, between being excitable and being frightened. And, you know, you're sort of in the, in the middle ground there, really. You're experiencing all the emotions. Is it fun? Well, yeah, it is fun. Did you get the last location? Uh, there's all those yeah. other emotions that, that go go with it as well. Unknown. Unknown clothing, yeah. Ponytail, black male. Stay where you are! Stay where you are! Stay there! Turn around. Put your arms out to your side. Put your arms out to your side now. Turn around. Turn around. Put your arms around your back for me. Yeah. Keep your arms out. Yeah. Okay, just stay there and relax, all right? What? Just relax a minute and we'll explain what's happening. What's your name? Isaac. Isaac what? What's, what's this in here? What's this in here? I'm in the pally. Give my passport out of my bag. What's that in here? My keys. Is that arrested for nothing? No, wait, just, just relax a minute, all right? No, wait. wait. Statistically, we get there and it's all quiet. You know, based on previous experiences. But it's not to say that it's not going to be different on that one. You could drive around the corner, the offender could be stood there in the middle of the road, still brandishing a firearm, challenging members of the public, or doing whatever they're doing with it. Do you want to see belt on? Are you all right? Okay. okay. I should call there. I should bring your mum now. He is innocent. Obviously, we've got a job to do, and we have to act on the information that we're given, don't we? If that turns out to be false, then obviously he'll be released and that will be the end of the matter okay. as far as he's concerned. Yeah, all right. OK? OK. All right, good night. The man was released without charge, as it was a case of mistaken identity. But it was the right thing to do because we were not to know, you know, what could have been, what could have happened. Nothing in place. Oh, yeah, there's a ladder here, a gun. He's just going to ask for a gun. And what kind of gun is it? Well, I think it's an handheld gun, mate. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't see that. You've got nothing on you. You shouldn't have, yeah? Turn around for a second away for me. You come very quickly, put you down, all right? All right. Well, I am, mate, but I'm a little intimidated about um, the gun, to be honest. We've got um, reason to believe that you might have been in possession of a firearm, which is why we've been called there tonight, OK? So at this moment, you're under arrest on suspicion of possession of a firearm. Remove yourself from the No gun was found in the search. The man was released with no further action taken against him. You've got a job to do, I respect that. Do you think you're scary? No. I don't think I'm very scary at all. I think you could be. Why? I don't know. You carry a gun and point tasers at people. Um, I don't think I'm particularly scary. To be truthful, it's, it's not the police that's yeah. bothering me. It's the fact that you've all got handguns in there. You're drawing your firearms and pointing at people on a weekly, daily basis. But that discharge of a firearm, well, you know, you, 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 it's a bullet at somebody. That is very, very rare. What the fuck is this for? Put your arms in your back for me. Listen to me. Put your arms into your back. Put your arms in your back for me and relax. How many shots have you discharged? Um, Operation? No, I haven't fired any shots on the street. Have you ever been shot at? No. Have you ever shot at anybody? No. I've never been shot at. I don't know anybody that has, to be honest. Law of averages has probably said, I'll go through my career and never pull the trigger. So part of the argument is, is why I spend my time getting stressed and worried about it? Is it something I think about, yeah? Is it something that might happen, yeah? But I just hope if that ever happens, I'm justified in doing it, I've done it for the right reasons, and I get the right person. I don't think about it very often. If you thought about that kind of thing that often, you'd absolutely torture yourself. 
despite carrying weapons on all their jobs. Nottinghamshire's armed response officers have so far never actually fired live ammunition on the streets. Uh, there's been a uh, crash in transit robbery. Just, uh, just shot come in, right like a security guard's been shot. Got one been shot. Talking about it being a small calibre bullet, it's been shot once in the leg. There's an entry wound, but no exit wound. It's what you train for, it's what you've joined the department for. Um, I wouldn't say that you, got, you get excited, but I think you, your senses do get heightened. We all want to get there as quick as we can, because the quicker you get there, the more chance initially you've got of, of catching, catching the baddie. Is it not my fault though, Sturky, is it? <laughs> it's the blind, deaf motorists of Nottingham. Hey, fucking hell. Not me? <sighs> Why, what's up? You make me nervous. He's a bit of a late breaker. I think I had a laptop on my lap at the time, so every time I looked up, I was uh, kind of getting cars coming towards us. It was a very safe, a very progressive and a very quick police advance drive. Despite their efforts, by the time they get to the scene, the gunmen have fled empty-handed. Apparently there's been a time delay on the safe and the guards try to plead with the offenders that that's the case. And then uh, one of the offenders has said, oh, just fucking shoot him. So he's lowered the gun and just shot him through the kneecap. Have you seen somebody who's been shot? Yes. Not a very nice thing, really, is it? Um, the person I saw shot survived. He had, I think as a shotgun was discharged towards him um, and his body was peppered with pellets. Uh, so he'll be scarred for life, no doubt. It's not, it's not particularly pleasant. Um, you know, the trauma involved is massive and it's something that, uh, you know, sticks with you, really. Um, yeah. A firearms wound is never a nice, clean thing. It's not like seeing films where you can get back up and walk. It tends to rattle around your body and ruin you. The day after the shooting, and no arrests have yet been made. As a precaution, the armed response unit are tasked with offering protection to all cash in transit vans. Next 15, 20, we will sit here. Probably sit here a bit more, and then we just might leap into action, which will consist of getting out the car and standing around while the uh, cash van comes up to do the, uh, can, uh, the, the cassette transfer. And then we shall get back in the car and just drive around following it. I think that's it. As and when it stops again, we'll get out again and provide some visible reassurance. Visible High profile reassurance. policing, yeah. deterrent just to piss our lives away. Mm. I'll risk assess that and decided not to engage that threat. He keeps himself entertained. Um, yeah, what can I say? If there are people knocking around that are watching what we're doing, there's a strong possibility that if they're watching what we're doing, they're thinking we're all over it, they're just going to go off somewhere else and think about wrecking and planning something elsewhere. <laughs> you've got to be eyes on, you've got to be alert about what you're doing. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's not driving around all over the place at Walk Factor 12 and blatting off to firearms jobs and, you know, pointing guns at baddies and locking people up, which of course is what we'd love to do day in, day out. It's just a different part of our job. It's at the monotonous end of the scale, yeah, I'd agree with that. The armed response police deal with more than just gun crime in Nottingham. They regularly find themselves called to the scene of violent antisocial behaviour. 
there has been a fight outside a bar in the city centre. Mate, just release your arm. No, fuck that! Stop struggling. Wait, no, fuck that! 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 Release your arm and fuck stop that. resisting! Stop no. resisting! Tell them to get off me, I was... Stop resisting! No, fuck no. that! Tell them to get off me, I'm fuck! Let me up and I'll... Let me up and I'll stop! Oi! Let me up and I'll fuck it! Oi! Blood. We call it claret. It's just a little bit of a colloquial thing we tend to tend to use a little bit, you know. If there's a little bit of claret knocking around, then you know somebody's bleeding at the end of the day. <laughs> Put my fucking shoes on now! now. Put my shoes on no. now! Not having no, shoes on, you're waiting. Yeah. Wait. Put so my shoes on now! Get me off the floor now! No, you're staying I'm in fucking assholes! Where am I gonna go? You're not moving. Where am I gonna go? Fucking ass! Get me off the floor! Get back on the fucking floor! Just calm down! The suspects in violent fights seldom come quietly. I think it's the pain threshold which makes them stronger. I think they don't feel the pain. So I think then it gives the impression that they're that they're stronger. <laughs> How much force can you use in the situation? The law says that you can use whatever force is, is deemed to be reasonable, proportionate and appropriate to the circumstances. To deal with people who present a threat of violence, Nottingham's armed response officers all now carry tasers, capable of delivering a 50,000 volt shock when discharged. It's an emergency, what's your emergency? There's a big fire outside, it's women being thrown around in all sorts. How many people? They're about 15, 20. Okay, officers are travelling, sir. An armed response vehicle is called to a fight in a pub by officers requesting taser backup. A taser would be a less lethal option. It's a device which is used to incapacitate somebody, but the pistol would be a lethal weapon and your taser is a, a less lethal option. Yeah. Come on now, let's stop yeah. All right. Stop. Stop. You know that stupid little fucking dwarf! When we identified that that person needed to be arrested, it would have probably somebody was going to get hurt arresting him because he was a he was a big old chap. You got waitress raping me. Having a taser at a job like that, even if it's not out and on show and overt, it just shows that if it's even there in the background, it's an option to be used. Should it be needed? Dad, go on, we're going. Dad, we're going. We're going. Go on. Suspicion of assault. He turned out to be quite an easy person to deal with, and he was very amenable. Last year, Nottinghamshire Police attended over 1,500 incidents in which advanced authorisation to use Taser was granted. Cops who are working 24-7 front line, they're going to what would appear to be quite minor incidents when they're initially reported, but when they get there, the, uh, the threat level and what they're confronted with on the street is completely disproportionate to what it's been reported as. There's an extremely large fight inside the pub, weapons involved. Why run the risk of sending officers round to arrest somebody like that when somebody could get hurt? Why not send an ARV round with a taser and let that person know you've got a taser and if they don't want to comply when they're arrested, they're going to get tasered. Get you all out! Get me out! 
On a personal level, I think it's the best thing we've got. There are a few people which, at the back end of 50,000 volts, would probably make me smile. Do I think every police officer should have a taser? Yes, I do. I think every, every frontline police officer should be armed with a taser. Get back! I've lost count of how many times I've been there, whether it be myself or a colleague who's drawn taser, and it's totally calmed the situation down. It means that less police officers are getting injured, it means that less members of the public are getting injured. Have you ever been tasered? I've had a short burst, yes. Half second burst. And that was enough to put me on the floor. You know, if you stub your toe on, like, the washing machine when you're walking through your kitchen, that really hurts, doesn't it? That's going to have you hopping around and swearing. Well, it does, let's be honest. Maybe multiply that by about 100 and I reckon you're getting close. Probably like holding an electric fence, but times up by 10,000, really. I've never experienced pain like it. One incident in which PC Dan Butler used his taser grabbed the headlines when a member of the public filmed the event on his phone. Now, it may be that they're just trying to put a handcuff on him or that he has some kind of a weapon. And what, what we do have at this stage is a lot of the drama, but not an awful lot of the facts, but it is an unfolding... I think it's controversial from a public's point of view because they watch something like that and get a very short clip of what's happened. But actually, the scenario that led up to that, you know, <laughs> went on for quite a period of time. We've given this guy ample opportunity to A, go home, even offered him a lift home, so we made the decision that he was going to be arrested. As I took hold of one of his arms, he turned around and punched me in the face. And next thing I know, I felt this really excruciating pain on the top of my, uh, my left my left thigh. So I turned around to my partner and said, he's fucking biting me, he's fucking biting me. And then he's been tasered in his back and he starts pulling my watch in my hand towards his mouth. So I've assumed that he's going to bite me again and he's, he's pulling my wrist towards him. So I've punched him as hard as I could in the top of his body to try and get him to loosen his grip. Tasers are designed as essentially a less lethal option other than using uh, a firearm with bullets, but it is less lethal. It doesn't mean it's non-lethal, so it can kill. Um, so obviously there are strict guidelines as to when police can use such force and they have to be in fear of injury for themselves or for members uh, of the public. I carry an asp, which is a metal, metal pole, which if I hit you with will hurt you. I carry CS, which, if I spray at you, hurts you for 20 minutes. I carry a taser, which, if I fire it, it causes you excruciating pain for five seconds. But it can kill people. Um, I think anything can kill people. I mean, I've, I'm aware of, not in this country, but I'm aware of in America where tasers have been discharged and somebody's had a heart attack following, following a, a discharge. You know, you could kill somebody if you hit them around the head with a baton or, or spray somebody in the face with some CS. They have a bad reaction. They could die at the end of the day. You know, you can't, you can't ever rule it out. Darling, did you get that? I did, yeah. I can't wait to fucking put it on YouTube either. Look here. Hey, hey, you wankers, the big boys. Yeah, I'm telling you, the big boys. So what? You've got the do-gooders in the world who, who will always say it should never have happened. And uh, if you give uh, all police officers a taser, there's going to be more and more instances of that. It's coming back to the issue in relation to firearms and uh, reasonable force and, and what's necessary and proportionate within the circumstances. The man in the stolen car has been arrested 13 times, but has only been convicted of three offences. On this occasion, he was found guilty of taking a vehicle without consent, driving whilst disqualified and without insurance. Shining the camera, man. I'm going to start smashing the camera. He received a further six months disqualification. He has since been arrested for another offence and was sentenced to eight months in prison. Barbara Bishop is pleading guilty to causing a fear of violence by possessing an imitation firearm. She is awaiting sentence. The man she threatened denies robbing her. The suspect, arrested at gunpoint, had the charge of threatening to kill dropped against him due to a lack of evidence. The collection of rifles and shotguns have been returned to his grandparents' farm. 
On police. Stay there. Put your hands up in the air. Two weeks after police failed to find a gun in this vehicle. It was involved in a chase with armed officers. The man who was driving crashed the car and escaped on foot. After a five-month investigation into the shooting of the security guard, a 25-year-old man was arrested. We're uh, necessarily evil. You've got to have armed police, unfortunately. That's just how society's gone. Would I like to work in a police force where there weren't armed police? Yeah. But it's not like that in this out there, is it? A team of highly motivated officers <laughs> in a van. You've got to get the van right. The van's right, most other things are all clicking around it. Trained to deal with all eventualities. From specialist searches to weekend drinkers. It's a good job we've got thick skin. <laughs> And to major public disorder. If that's what's required, a van full of knuckle draggers, then that's what we can deliver. <laughs> See what nurses really think about the daily challenges they face in Confessions of a Nurse. Available now on 4OD, channel4.com. Next tonight, dealing with the fallout from Festival Fever. It's Party Paramedics. <laughs>